Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. I want to begin this episode, which uh, is going to focus, like I said last episode, on uh, mainly living off the land, the kinds of things you can harvest uh, from just going out and getting food uh, passively without necessarily hunting something that might um, either be difficult to kill or might try and kill you back. We're going to get to that in uh, probably the next episode or the one after that. But we're going to talk about passive natural food sources, some things that you can harvest that aren't food, but you can still find out in the natural world. But also, I want to start this episode by talking about some stuff that came up in the comments from the last one, because there were some great tips. First of all, um, one really good reminder that came up uh, in relation to eating, and this is kind of an early basic to understand. It's fairly intuitive, so I'm guessing most of you um, have picked up on it uh, just in your own playthrough. But when you have these canned food items, no Notice that I got really excited, I think, in episode one when I found the can opener. That's always a good thing to find, you know, in your first few minutes of gameplay. You play in a lower difficulty and you're in a civilized area like this, you're probably going... Well, it's, Mystery Lake is is rustic, but still, there, there's buildings. Um, there's definitely areas with more buildings, but you're going to find a can opener uh, fairly quickly when you are, you know, in areas like this. And when you get a can opener, you get the full caloric value of the item that you're trying to eat. If you don't have a can opener, you better have a knife... So you can try and open the can that way. That will reduce the condition of the knife. That's not ideal. You don't want to be using a knife for that, but you can do that. If you don't have that, you're going to have to bust the can open. If you have to bust the can open, then uh, you're going to lose some of the contents of the food item, period. So just be aware of that. Number two, uh, someone had asked me about purification tablets and whether or not they're really worth using. These are, of course, we don't have any right now, but uh, when we find some in the series, I'll, I'll maybe reference this point at the beginning of this episode, but it is worth bringing up early on that you can purify water uh, one of two ways. We boiled it in the last episode, which is the way that, by the way, the vast majority of the time that I have played the Long Dark, the long dark on and off YouTube, I have just boiled water to purify it, period. That's all I need to do. I don't feel the need to do anything else, and uh, it, it works great every time. But you can also use purification tablets. The advantage being that it's instantaneous and that it cure, it uh, purifies a certain amount of water. I don't remember exactly how much off the top of my head, uh, but uh, I might find some purification tablets before long and we'll figure out what that is. And you'll definitely find out in the comments below. Speaking of that, thank you guys so much. It's been so awesome to see the advice and the questions coming in and the participation in the comment section. It helps me say, I told you so, <laughs> when I uh, reference my comments about the community in the first video. So thanks. Thanks again for watching and following along and commenting. So, um, so yeah, that's how purification tablets work. I will say that in a, um, test run of a custom playthrough recently, I did use purification tablets. There was a moment where I had to use them. So we'll talk more about purification tablets. I just want to mention that those are there for now. And, uh, when I get them, I'll talk more about like when you would actually need to use them. And then finally, uh, one thing I would like to start this episode doing is something you should always be doing pretty early on. And that's um, actually looking at, you know, some of the stuff that I can get rid of clothing wise and some of the stuff that what I can do with what I get rid of. So obviously we found these very nice worn insulated boots. We also had these worn trail boots. I want to go ahead and harvest the worn leather shoes that I started out with because they're crap. <laughs> there is an advantage uh, in playing the lawn dark to holding on to items sometimes. But uh, let's see, we've got these worn trail boots. That's right, I've got two pair of worn trail boots. I'm going to harvest the lesser of the two. There is an advantage to holding on to clothing items, especially on higher difficulty levels, because your clothing is more vulnerable to uh, damage during a wildlife struggle uh, with a wolf or especially a bear. And if that happens, or a moose as well, I think a moose will damage your clothing. Uh, clothing. I haven't uh, encountered a moose yet because they're incredibly rare, as we've been discussing in the comments on Against All Odds. But um, you can lose clothing unexpectedly so it's good to have like some backup shoes every now and again but most of the time you know especially on lower difficulty you can get rid of older items that you're not really using anymore so as i mentioned also in the last episode there is tons of cloth just hanging out around the mystery lake camp office here so i'm gonna start breaking it down just like i mentioned notice that i walk up to this curtain can break that down too every curtain in the game can be broken down for cloth if you didn't know that now you do it's pretty great Let's see, I feel like there's more... Oh, yeah, curtains. I was walking around in here doing a test recording for some uh, some video settings earlier, and I remember seeing curtain as an indicator when I was walking up here, but I was in the dark, so I didn't remember where they were, but they're obviously right there. Okay, so that's a good amount of cloth. That's probably most of what I need, and there's still more cloth in here. So, lots of cloth available to you from the get-go, 
which is quite nice. When you're in this area, anyway, if you're playing on a higher difficulty level, you might have to fight a little bit harder to get some cloth. But cloth is one of the more available, generally, uh, items in the game. So, okay, now that I'm looking at uh, a handful of cloth, how much do I have exactly? I've got 13 cloth. And I've got uh, some cured leather because I broke down some shoes that I was not in need of. So, let's sort by condition. We're now looking at our weakest items. Another thing you can do is pull up the clothing menu so you can repair the items on your torso, maybe maybe your legs first. Usually those are the most consequential in terms of warmth protection. By the way, notice we don't have any hand covering yet. I'll talk about that once we step outside. But uh, for now, I'm going to use the clothing screen method and I'm going to repair the other light shell that we picked up. I still, <laughs> those of you who watched the second to last episode of Against All Odds, you know what just happened. <laughs> Thank God that repair button is at the top. Okay, let's repair this one more time. So we failed that first time, actually. And we need to drink some water, don't we? Now, repairing, of course, passes time. And a good amount of it. So you have to keep your eye on your survival indicators while you're doing this. And of course, early on, repairing is going to be a little bit tougher to do. So right now we're obviously a beginner. Uh, there's a certain chance of success, a certain amount of time it takes. The better you get, the, the faster you will be, the better your chance of success will be, and you'll repair items more. But I'm going to go ahead and continue to use this sewing kit. You can also use a fishing tackle if you don't have a sewing kit. So if, if, if you're completely out of sewing kits, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you just have to find a hook and you'll be good. All right, let's repair our jeans now. All right, see, we failed. And the stats of items generally scale. They actually exactly scale to the condition of the item. So right now, these jeans are at 56%, which means roughly when you when I fully repair them, uh, it's going to be closer to a 2 Fahrenheit, 2 degree Fahrenheit uh, warmth bonus. Notice that I'm losing 5% condition on the sewing kit every single time. I, oh, I failed again every single time I try. And yes, by the way, when you fail, you do use up the cloth that you were attempting to use, which makes me sad. And also you can only repair during daylight hours. So we are about to lose our ability to repair unless we light a fire. You, you, you need light to repair is, more ac is the more accurate explanation. You don't have to have daylight, but you have to have light, period. So you can light a fire if you have enough fuel to keep it going for several hours and do it that way if you like. Um, I think what I'm going to try and do is just pass some time here. I don't know if I've passed some time in the series yet, but wait a minute, where am I? Oh, okay, I lost my bearings on where I was in the room. I'm gonna step upstairs, and I'll pass a little bit of time until we are tired enough to sleep the rest of the night. If I, if I tried to sleep right now, we'd wake up in the middle of the night because we're only halfway tired. That's only enough to sleep for about five hours or so. 10 hours will, will get you most times. It's 10 to 11 hours, I think, when you're fully exhausted that you need. So first things first, let me go ahead. I also need to eat, so let's eat these uh, banged up pork and beans. Again, you can see that I'm using my can opener since I have one automatically. If I had a knife, it would give me the option of what I wanted to open the food item with. And we also have this herbal tea. The condition is pretty low. As a commenter pointed out on episode two, though, if you cook these, uh, especially while the condition is higher than 23, the resulting condition of the tea items that you get uh, which is, as you can see, you can have a total of five from this one pack of herbal tea. You will, the resulting condition will actually be higher. It does need water, of course, to make tea, so you'll need that as well. But, um, you know, let's go ahead and we're going to pass time rather than sleep. And let's go ahead and just pass, let's say, four hours of time. And that should put us maybe just past midnight or so. And then I'm going to try and sleep the rest of the night and hope that we have a little bit of daylight when we wake up. Yeah, there we go. Just past midnight. I'm not going to worry about eating before bed, and we are going to need more water before long, so I'll attend to that in the opening of this episode. But as soon as we have daybreak, I'm going to step outside and show you some stuff that you can find just by looking around. I'm saying 10 hours. We're not going to sleep for 10 hours. Watch what happens. Also notice that when you sleep, the game will tell you how many calories you're going to burn, so you can be very intentional about how long you're going to sleep and whether or not you want to enter into a starving state while you're asleep. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and eat a few more things here. I've got plenty of food, thankfully. 
get some food soon. That's literally why I'm eating a can of pork and beans, dude. Okay, I'm also going to eat some of these sardines. The sardines do have a little bit of water in them. As you can see, that's helping our thirst replenish slightly. And I will drink the very last of this water just to get it out of my inventory. Okay, so now we have some daylight, which is nice. Actually, we slept a good while. I, I was not expecting to be able to sleep for much past dawn, but it's mid-morning, almost noon. So we slept in. Uh, let's go ahead and repair a few more things. It's going to take some time, especially if we fail. The failures are, of course, eating up our cloth, so I might have to even get more, but I would like to fully repair my stuff up. If, if you're curious how much you have to repair your items, see, this requires cloth and cured leather. You don't have to have everything at 100% constantly. Uh, you'll notice that there's not much of a difference for most clothing items between 90% and, say, 100%. But it's good when you have... I would say, typically, when I'm below 80% on an item is, is when I start to... Or getting close to 80% is when I start to think, I should probably repair that. But for now, just for the sake of momentum, I'm going to go ahead and step outside. We need water anyway. So let's head out into the world and start talking about some of the stuff that we can find without trying too hard. Also, speaking of which, just real quick, let's make some fish and tackle. Again, we looked at the crafting screen last episode. I just pulled up uh, the journal by hitting J on the computer and uh, hopped over to the crafting screen and went to fishing tackle. Very easy. You can craft it on the fly. You don't need a bench. Let me make absolutely sure I picked everything up over here. Yes, I did. Sounds like there's a little bit of weather outside. That we're going to have to deal with. Yep, a little bit of weather. Okay, so you might remember that when I walked in here initially, I did pick up some rose hips, and there's some more back here. Rose hips are one of the natural items you can harvest from the world. They're, they tend to stand out, and these bushes are fairly distinctive, and you can see the, the red buds from a good distance. Rose hips are natural pain killers. So if you don't have real pain killers, and I can't recall if I've picked any up yet. I have. So if you don't have some of these, but you say have a sprain, and you have the ability, you either have rose hip tea on you already, or you have the ability to make some. You can light a fire and make some rose hip tea. Then what you can do is um, go ahead and drink the rose hip tea, and it will have the same effect as taking painkillers for a sprain. Pretty cool. Exact same effect. There's no difference. So it's it's a replacement for painkillers uh, if you need them. So if you want to reference how to get those ready, you would have the rose hips, and then you would prepare them like so. Notice it takes 24, though. You have to pick a good amount of rose hips before you can really get started. So that's one thing that you can find out in the world that will help you subsist. But it's about to get even better because we are walking down into these reeds. And notice if you look between the reeds, there's my favorite thing in the world, the cattail plant. Especially if you're playing on higher difficulty in the Long Dark, if you're not harvesting every single one of these that you see, you, you, I, I don't know what to say to you. I mean, look at this. One cattail stalk is 150 calories, and these things, unless you are playing with uh, lower harvestable item spawns, which is a custom setting that is not even used, I don't think, in any of the standard difficulty settings of the Long Dark, um, that's 150 calories. From These things are all over the place, unless you're, again, playing on lower uh, item spawns. So, um... That's amazing. And not only do you get that, but then check this out. You take this and you get a cattail head as well, which is tinder, just automatic. So you have fire starting capability. It's not fuel, it's tinder. So it's used to start fire and it's consumed whether or not you succeed in starting the fire. But cattails are an amazing way to keep your stomach from totally emptying out. And as a matter of fact, they're so common, I wouldn't be surprised in a future patch to see... I, maybe I shouldn't even say this, so I don't give the developers ideas. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see... I, I won't say what the number I, I was thinking was, but I wouldn't be surprised to see their calorie uh, yield reduced significantly. And we'll be snacking on some soon, because we're going to need to. But for now, I'm going to start walking across the ice here, and seeing what else we can spot in the area. What do we have? I don't see any cattails here. I know there are some a little bit farther in here. Here they are. Again, 150 calories for every single one of these that I'm picking, and tinder. Excellent. 
So it's a really great way to live off the land. So another item that you can find in the wild, very similar to rose hips, and uh, we haven't seen any just yet, but uh, once I get back to the, the, the rim of this lake, I might spot a stump with some of these. Um, there are also what are called reishi mushrooms. Now, reishi mushrooms are also used to make a tea, and the tea is used as a natural antibiotic. So these are things, if you have, um, I believe food poisoning requires antibiotics, and I believe in the long dark anyway, that's just, that's just the general term. Um, and then I also think that, what was it? Um, what else requires antibiotics? I had it on the tip of my tongue just a second ago, but I completely forgot. But um, I'll think about it in a second. Basically, if you ever need antibiotics and you don't have a, a, um, a bottle of them like this, then you can use reishi tea in the same way you use rosehip tea. And you prepare them in the same way as well. So you pull up the crafting screen and you can see prepared reishi mushrooms there. Requires just two reishi mushrooms, so not quite as many. By the way, notice that when I pick rose hips, you get eight every time. If you didn't catch that, that's a small detail. I didn't point it out initially, but when you pick the rose hips, it automatically gives you eight. So you do need to harvest a little bit more rose hip wise before you can make tea. Now, the nice thing about those teas, and some of you might have already thought to comment about this um, before I got to this point, but the nice thing about uh, the, the herbal tea I was looking at, my inventory earlier, the reishi tea. Okay, I do have frostbite risk. I'll talk about that in just a second. I'm glad that came up. I knew that was going to happen if I hung out here for a while. Method to my madness. All right, so let's step... Hang on, let me get these cattails too. I see I can't help myself. It's just a compulsion. Oh, but I, I am in a bad habit right now. I'm, I'm used to playing higher level play where I drop the second item because I don't need the, the tinder. Once you reach a certain point with fire starting skill, you um, you don't need the the heads anymore. And so obviously you can see I've just been dropping them by habit. But anyway, as I was about to say, the tea items, reishi tea, um, coffee also, which is not a tea, but you know, it's a drinkable item, cookable drink that you can find out in the world. Reishi tea, Rosehip tea, herbal tea, they all have a bit of caloric value as well. So you will, um, if you ever need food, you can consume those medicinal teas as a way to replenish calories, as a way to actually have food. Even though they're not in your food category, if you make those teas, they'll show up in your first aid. Either there or, again, on the, um, on the wheel. So let's talk about frostbite once I get inside here. I'm going to hightail it. Notice also, I'm holding down shift. I'm, I'm actually toggling it on and off. See what's happening to my calorie intake? Sorry, dear. When you run, when you sprint in the long dark, you are going to burn calories faster, just like you would expect. So we're going to stuff our face with... Uh... Hey, there's a wolf. We're going to stuff our face with cattails in a second. So I guess we'll be talking about wolves somewhat soon. Not just yet, though. didn't quite alert him to my presence. Okay, so let's talk briefly before I um, talk a little bit more about the different things you can find, because there's still more that you can harvest from the world that grows out in the world. But uh, let's talk a little bit about condition and afflictions. So this is the first time in the series I think that I've had a, an affliction risk. Again, the yellow icons are affliction risks. This is frostbite risk. And I mentioned earlier on that I still don't have any gloves to cover my hands. If you don't have anything on your head, if you don't, any part of your body that's not covered by something will be prone to frostbite. The way that frostbite works in the game is uh, risk will slowly build up over time. The higher difficulty you're playing on, the faster it will build up. And again, I'm hitting the F key to bring this screen up. And when the risk hits Close to 100%, the game has a high chance of giving you frostbite. I think frostbite, it might actually need to grow all the way to 100. But the point is, you don't want it to get high. And then once it, because once it gets up there, you will have frostbite on that particular part of your body. And the amount of damage that that does to you permanently uh, is proportionate to which part of your body it's on. So how does that work, you might wonder? Well, in the same way that our sprint meter is constrained by our clothing that we're wearing, your condition meter will be constrained by your frostbite. You will only be able to get up to, say, 90% health. You'll never be able to touch 100% health again. If you have frostbite on multiple parts of your body, it will add up. So it, it permanently reduces your vitality for an entire playthrough. You're done. So you don't want to have to deal with that. 
So let's do a little bit of scavenging here, and maybe we'll find some gloves. That would be nice. There's some other houses nearby that I can look through as well. There's some newsprint, which we can use for tinder, I suppose. Ah, a lot of empty containers in here. There's some cloth. Let's check under the bed. Anything hiding? Nope. Anything over here? Nope, nope. There's a book there, which we can... Books are, again, just so handy. There's a bunch of books in here now. They're handy for lighting fires. Oh, good, another emergency stim, which I can access very quickly from the uh, radio menu, from the wheel. And, uh, again, those give you a little bit of health if you need it. Before I leave anywhere, let's go ahead and stuff our faces so that we're not quite starving so much. And I do need to get some water. I've been dying of thirst for a while. But for those of you who are brand new to the game and maybe are watching this before diving in or before you've played all that much, this is a good demonstration of what condition drop actually looks like since we are now dying of thirst. Thirst does kill us a little bit more rapidly, so we're, we've already lost, uh, what is it, about 5% condition, I think, I saw. So let's eat down to 10 of these. The only thing about picking up a bunch of cattails is that they can be kind of heavy. Yeah, we're at 93% condition, and that's mainly because of... Not really being cold. We weren't that cold outside just now because we've got a good amount of um, wind protection on and we have a good amount of... Uh, we have a good amount of uh, wind. Uh, we have wind protection and just warmth protection in general. We've got good clothing. One thing I'll point out quickly, and we'll talk about this uh, again in a future episode, notice that um, some of my clothing is wet. When you stand out in heavy, wet winds like that, especially in a blizzard, your clothing will get wet very quickly. If you keep standing out there when it's below freezing temperature, it will start to freeze, which even if... You have clothing on certain parts of your body. Frostbite can affect parts of your body that are frozen. And you need to be by a fire if you want that to unfreeze, of course, or dry out quickly. Um, but clothing will also unfreeze or dry out naturally as well. So be wary of those blue indicators on your clothing because that's just that's something that can sneak up on you if you're... Maybe you've got a lot of clothing and you're starting to get confident about walking around outside. And so you think, oh, okay, well, cool. I can walk around in a blizzard now, which is totally something that I've done from time to time. Actually, no. <laughs> you want to be careful with that. Um, so just be mindful of how wet and frozen your clothes are getting while you're doing that. Because even with the best gear in the game, you can suddenly find yourself a lot less protected. Now that wolf is... Yep. Okay, so wolves have a general protection range. We've just aggroed our first wolf. And he is running to come get us. I'm going to uh, distract him slightly by sending him after these deer. We're going to run straight into these guys. Now, you might be wondering, first of all... He's actually right behind me. Okay, he's still after me. You might be wondering, first of all, is it possible to outrun a wolf? Can you ever, ever, ever outrun a wolf? Okay, he is still on me. He did not get distracted by any of those deer. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. In general, when you're running from a wolf like this, you want to stay on level ground because going uphill will, of course, slow you down. Or going downhill will speed the wolf up behind you. So you want to try and just stay on level ground and put some distance between you and the animal. I think he might have buggered off. What I was about to say is it is possible to... Oh, wait, nope. Hang on. He, he, he didn't bugger off, but he stopped pursuing us. He's now just patrolling over there. So it is possible to run from a wolf. It's possible to just keep putting distance between you and a wolf to the point where... They will give up on you. They'll lose interest. Sometimes they won't. It's also possible, based on some of the clothing items you're wearing, um, that, that you will actually scare a wolf off. So there are different ways to kind of avoid that situation that we just found ourselves in. But uh, I'm going to need... Hang on. Let's go ahead and break this down. I'm going to need some water. So we're going to go back to the... Camp office. I should have made some at the beginning of the episode, but that's okay. And get some water. So some other things that are harvestable from the world. We talked about reishi tea, we talked about rosehip tea, and we talked about cattails. There's, of course, also sticks and branches. We talked about those in the beginning of episode one. There's various different types of, or I think we did, maybe we didn't, but um, there's various sizes, right, of, of wood that fall. Uh, especially during windstorms, you can always find fresh limbs of all sizes, whether it's branches, sticks or outright limbs. Sometimes you find one like this that you can't actually break down. It's weird. But I think I've got more than enough now to light a basic fire and get going. And I can't recall if I have a hatchet yet. I do not have a hatchet yet. I do have two can openers. That's nice. 
another stick. Good rule of thumb, and I'll talk about why in a future episode. If you're wondering how many sticks to have on you any given time, think about 15. 15 is a good number of sticks to just keep handy, if you think in those terms. All right, we're going to light one of those books on fire because we have a nice high chance of success. We're going to use one of the cattail heads we picked and a wood match. I'll take the charcoal out of the, fires, out of the fire pit as well. It can be good for mapping. I'm not going to be doing a ton of mapping in this series. It's not something that I'm in the habit of doing. It's not something I feel the need to do. But again, it's there for you as an option if you want to you know, get better about that. But um, back to what I was... Um, if you want to get better about finding your way around the world and you need markers, you're not, a, you're not as good at visual markers, you need to have a map in front of you, which is a lot of us. So it's good that that function is there. But uh, what I was saying a moment ago is you have um, cattails, you have reishi tea, you have rosehip tea. There's also... Uh, saplings that spawn out in the world. And we're going to have to look at these in a future episode, but I'll go ahead and tell you um, what these are, are. They're the items that you can use to make bows and arrows later on. And they tend to spawn only in deeper wood. So you have to really go out of your way to find saplings. I've had people ask me, oh, I need to add more wood to the fire first. I've had people ask me, you know, what's, how do you find saplings? Like what's the best little trick, I suppose? And the only real advice that I can give when it comes to tracking down saplings, let's make a decent amount of, of water. The only real advice that I can give there, notice that our condition is going down a good bit because we're kind of taking our time getting this water ready. It's fine though. We'll rest and everything will be well. Just go out into the great unknown, go off the beaten path because you're very rarely going to find any saplings that are on the beaten path. And you will find them usually in the woods, kind of secluded from where you might be walking from point A to point B. That's where the saplings typically hang out. The birch saplings have a different color than the uh, maple saplings. Actually, I'll show you right now because I think we can look at them in our... Now, we can't actually see the sapling icons here, unfortunately, because we... But you can see here that the survival bow requires a maple sapling and some cured guts. And the arrow shaft requires a birch sapling. You get three arrow shafts from one birch sapling, so it's quite nice. Uh, but those are some of the items that you can find out in the world and harvest. Am I for... Oh! Oh! I'm forgetting one! I'm forgetting a really, really big one. Hang on. Let's see if we can find one before we uh, end this episode. I bet if I look around for a second. I have one last thing to teach you about living off the land. And um, I was going to fish this episode, but then that wolf decided to chase me. So we'll talk about fishing in the next episode. We'll dedicate a little bit of time to that because, you know, we're, we're talking about living off the plants so we can, we can kind of segue and, and split the topic into, you know, those different categories. Okay, where are you? I'm looking for one more. See, this is the kind of weather that will get your clothing wet if you hang out in it for too long. So just be mindful of how long, of how much time you spend in snow like this. You can see my clothing is already starting to get wet. Starting to see it's just some blue sneaking in at the bottom of these layers. All right. Shouldn't be too hard to spot what I'm looking for. I am encumbered, though. Notice one thing that starts to happen. I mentioned this in episode one, but I'll go ahead and show you now. My total carrying capacity is no longer 66 pounds. Now that I am less than 50% awake, more than 50% exhausted, if you will, I... Do not have as much ability to carry stuff. And the more encumbered you are in the long dark, whether you're tired or not, the slower you walk. So notice I have an encumbrance icon in the bottom right. And that does mean that the more tired you get, the slower you will walk while carrying the same amount of stuff. This is the last harvestable item that I want to tell you about. And there's three, which is perfect. This is old man's beard. You definitely want to grab this stuff, especially on higher difficulty whenever you see it. So let's review. Rosehip tea requires water and you need to craft, you need to prepare the rose hips from the crafting menu. And that will give you some caloric value. It will feed you a little bit and of course restore some thirst because of the water that you use to make it. But it will also, it's a natural painkiller. So it will take care of sprains and other uh, related issues uh, that require, that would normally require painkillers. 
I don't know if there's anything other than sprains in the game right now that require painkillers. Maybe broken ribs require something to a certain extent. But uh, there's, I haven't had broken ribs yet, so I genuinely don't know. If that happens in the series, which I doubt it will, but if that happens, then we will, um, we'll talk about it then. The reishi tea is a natural antibiotic. So infections, uh, actual full-blown infections. If you have an infection from a wolf bite, that's right, I was trying to think about this earlier. If you have an infection from a wolf bite, if you have food poisoning, um, infection risk is something completely different. For that, you need antiseptic, which you can either get from these heavy as hell bottles. Oh my God, I'm carrying four antiseptic bottles. We're going to drop those at the beginning of the next episode. That's an inventory management lesson if I've ever seen one. But the antiseptic, see we've got frostbite risk again because I still don't have anything for my hands. The antiseptic, um, if you don't have the, the bottled antiseptic, and it, it's actually even better to, to do this, you go and look for old man's beard like I just did. And I could have, you know, harvested all the old man's beard in that area, but I wanted to get back to, to shelter as soon as possible so that I could, you know, warm up and also end the episode. But the old man's beard, once you've gathered three, you can harvest or you can craft old man's beard wound dressing. And once you've got a wolf bite bandaged, you can use old man's beard wound dressing in the same way you use topical antiseptic from the brown bottle. And that actually will treat the infection risk of a wound. Very handy. So whenever you see those old man's beard items dangling from branches, especially blowing in the wind. They can be easy to spot once you learn to look for them. That's something you definitely want to look out for as something that you can harvest from the world and live off the land, get resources without having to find something man-made like a pill bottle in order to help you survive. So again, next episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about fishing. I want to have some more discussion about weather soon too, like how the weather generally works both in the short term and the long term in the long dark. If you have any particular requests for those topics or just future topics for episodes six through 10, let me know. I, I don't know why I took that weird breath just there, but... <laughs> I'll leave it in the recording just for fun. Uh, let me know and uh, I will consider those in the comments. Thanks again for everyone commenting so far and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time.